today we are going to be talking about the most recent Warhammer community article regarding combat patrol and combat patrol boxes. We are going to be talking about new data cards, rules, as well as official announcements when it comes to the Leviathan combat patrols. If you enjoy the content, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing, as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to support what I do. My name is Eplash, and this is Empire of War Games. So I usually instantly skip over to the most important parts of the article. There's one thing I wanted to mention and I wanted to read, and it is at the very top. As always, the article is going to be linked down in the pinned comment below. So the thing I wanted to mention is that, you know, it's a regular introductory paragraph, but the last bit is something that makes me kind of happy, but it could be just the Warhammer community team hyping it up a little bit too much. It says, so it's time for the next of the flagship game modes, Combo Patrol. And if they are actually treating Combo Patrol as a flagship game mode with continued support and so on, I am very excited. Small points, kind of Warhammer 40k games are just my jam. It is the reason why I created this channel. So if they are actually going to take the time and support the format with ongoing releases, ongoing uh, balancing and so on, I'm going to be very, very happy. And I hope there's a little bit something about Combo Patrol in each and every codex or at least in the core book so everyone can easily know what they are getting into with the Combo Patrol they are most interested in before actually committing to buying anything. Because if it is meant to be a starting point for a lot of players or if it is just meant to be a small fun game that is just over very quickly people need to know what they are getting into whenever they get a combat patrol box outside of just the visuals obviously so funnily enough i've already set up a video that is going to go live on saturday at 3 or 4 pm that is going to discuss how gw is going to be able to support combat patrol going forward without changing their production pipeline or anything so if you're interested in that consider subscribing now, just to bring everyone up to speed on Combat Patrol again, Combat Patrol is a format that is completely new to 10th edition and that is going to be smaller than the smallest regular format that is 1000 points because all you have to do is get a Combat Patrol box and you assemble it out of the box and that is what you're going to be running. Obviously, GW is going to give you data cards and those data cards are going to have specific loadout options, but you can just have them count as something else. So if you, for example, equip your Terminator Captain with a Thunderhammer or something and he actually has just a sword on his data card, who cares? L like literally, if your Tau Fire Warriors are Breachers instead of Fire Warriors, no one cares, literally. It's, it's not that deep. Uh, you can just assemble them the way you think they look cool and it is going to be fine. I don't see it as a kind of what you see is what you get kind of problem. And yeah, GW is going to go ahead and balance combo patrol against each other. So all the combo patrol boxes are going to stay roughly within the same power level. Another thing that was mentioned at a Q&A, but this is secondhand information, is that some combo patrols are actually in fact getting replaced. So the videos I have done previously about chaos and about uh, space Marine combo patrol boxes are actually valid and me discussing their value in a combo patrol format in a kind of quote unquote sealed format actually has value so if you want to check those out if you haven't seen them yet they're on the channel and yeah that is basically combo patrol it's its own small format that is hopefully going to get additional balancing and additional combo patrol variants as we move along a couple of boxes are going to get replaced but you are going to have a hopefully good experience just matching two combo patrol boxes against each other and playing them out of the box with all of that out of the way, let's talk about Leviathan and the two combat patrols you're going to be able to build out of the contents of the box. So you're obviously not going to be able to field the entire halves because that would be mad, but you can assemble a combat patrol out of one half. Like for example, this Tyranid combat patrol called the Vardinga Swarm. This one includes a Winged Tyranid Prime, Termagans, uh, Von Ryan Lepers, Barbgons, and a Psychophage, and has a high model count seems to have at least one bigger turn in it so it kind of matches everything i wanted out of a turn in a combat patrol because it has a couple of bigger models it has some shooting in there it has a lot of melee in there and it is decently swarmy so this one looks very well balanced a cool little combat patrol and i'm happy gw is deciding to kind of support combat patrol this way and offer combat patrol ready armies in a box that is no doubt going to sell 100 thousands of boxes and most people who want to have access to them are probably going to get access to them, judging by how everything is out of stock on the GW website and how the past couple releases have been horrible and just 
a couple of boxes have been printed. I think all of their manpower and all of their production power is going into Leviathan right now. Now, while my first impression of the Tyranid half is very positive, I'm not so sure about the Space Marine half. This one is called Strike Force Octavius and contains two leader choices with a Terminator Captain and a Terminator Librarian, five Terminators, and five Inferno Space Marines in Mark X armor. And yeah, we are used to Space Marines having a lower model count, but this seems excessively so. Um, I'm not sure how they are going to handle releasing them after Leviathan uh, is probably going to go out of print. So we are going to have to wait and see how they handle this. But I have my own theories we are going to talk about in a second. My problem here is that they are using two leader choices. And whenever I talked about Combat Patrol for 9th edition, I usually prefer to having a higher body count than having more leader choices. Leader choices are usually on their own in Warhammer 40,000, not strong enough to carry a game but more bodies certainly are. You have objective holding in there, you're probably going to want more OC on the table, and leader choices just don't offer that. And they in turn need to have a ton of punch to get that. And I just don't see that happening with a Terminator Captain and a Terminator Librarian. I could be completely wrong though, we are going to have to wait and see until I actually can play these boxes and try it out for myself. But my first impression on this one is a little bit mixed. The model count is very low, and I just don't see this list having enough punch. But we are going to have to wait and see. Now what else does the article mention? It mentions that the rulebook inside the Leviathan launch box contains the organizational rules for Combat Patrol. These are also going to be available for free on Warhammer Community. Furthermore, all you need is a 44 by 30 board, so basically the same size as it always was for Combat Patrol ever since 9th edition. And yeah, that's all you really need. You, If you buy Leviathan, you can already start playing after assembling your models. Now, one thing I'm going to throw in there is the picture you can see on the screen right now. A lot of people have been theorizing about it and whether this is quote unquote the command edition of 10th edition. So the biggest version of the starter set that is going to release after Leviathan goes out of print. And if that is the case, it is going to be a very, very expensive box because the terrain is most of the uh, Frontieris stuff, which is not cheap. And having kind of two halves, um, two smaller halves, admittedly, of the Leviathan box seems very, very expensive. So I kind of have my doubts here. I think this is just a cool looking board example for what a Combo Patrol game could look like. I further expect that the biggest version of the starter sets, the quote unquote command edition, is just going to have both Combo Patrols in there to make it easy for GW to sell them, to make it easy for new players to get into the game if they just want to have two working forces play against each other because that was the biggest problem of the current starter sets. And I just doubt the terrain is going to be in there. Otherwise, it's just going to be a very, very steep price for people to get into the game. But who knows? Maybe GW wants to offer multiple variants where the Elite Edition is just the models and the Command Edition is indeed quite expensive, but with all the terrain you can see. Um, yeah, if you have any opinions on this, I would be curious to see um, or to read whether you would be interested in such a box with a lot of terrain or not. Are you even going to pick up Leviathan? That kind of stuff interests me because, yeah, as I said, this box just looks very expensive. Probably going to cost the same as Leviathan, to be honest. But that is all not confirmed. A thing that was confirmed is the core principle of Combo Patrol. Each Combo Patrol has been given self-contained rules that define it on the table that includes data sheets, but also secondary objectives, factual rules, enhancements, and stratagems, all flavored to match the forces narrative and balance against each other. So the problem here is that GW initially announced Combo Patrol being very, very similar to 10th edition 40k. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore, at least from what I've seen so far and what I've read. It seems that they are changing almost everything about the army with their with its own rules. It is going to play the same on a surface level, but everything else is going to get changed. So if we look, for example, at the two data cards they've provided for the um, Terminator Captain, you can see that the weapon loadout has been predetermined. The invulnerable save is at the perfect spot for the combat patrol sheet, just something I wanted to mention. It's way better there compared to the regular data card where it's on the bottom right. It just sucks. And... As you can see, the in the Abilities tab, Unstoppable Valor is the exactly same rule as the Imperialism Sword. And they've renamed them because they wanted to be able to balance them on their own separately in its own bespoke game mode, which is Combat Patrol in this case. So while this is going to get confusing very, very quickly if you are going to jump between Combat Patrol and regular Warhammer 40,000 a lot, for Combat Patrol itself, it is fine. 
um, Combo Patrol itself is probably going to feel much more like a board game where you have kind of your predetermined rules, data cards and everything, and you're just going to whip them out and play against each other. While Warma 40,000 is then going to re really require you to pay attention to what's on the data card, what you're actually doing. Army assembly is going to take quite a while. So if you're a new player jumping from Combo Patrol to regular Warma 40,000, that is actually going to be a bigger jump than I initially expected. Now the cool thing is that the Warhammer Design Studio tackles the problems at the right places. So Tyranids retain Shadow in the Warp and Synapse, so that is going to make your transition from playing Tyranids for Combat Patrol easier um, whenever you move to regular Warhammer 40,000. And they mentioned that the Tyranid Prime is a little bit fragile in regular 40k, but the Terror of Vardengast, which is its name for Combat Patrol, has a Forb and Vulnerable save to make it harder to shift, which is really damn good and definitely useful for your only character model in that box. So they are kind of balancing everything out. So I'm not as worried about the Redemptor Dreadnought or the Impulsors anymore, even though I still think these boxes are going to be a little bit weird. Now, while most of the things in the Combo Patrol boxes are predetermined, I'm glad that GW gives us here an example of enhancements where you can have a choice between one or the other. That is not a ton of choice, but it is going to keep your box a little bit kind of different and the game's a little bit different and fresh so that is definitely something I appreciate a lot because balancing around that is probably eating up more time so having more options is good. So for the Tyranids the Psychostatic Veil which is the default enhancement reads the bearer has the lone operative ability and a 4 plus and vulnerable save in addition each time a melee attack targets the bearer subtract one from the hit roll. This is going to make your winged prime insanely tanky like super tanky and prevent your opponent with a lot of Terminator units to just waltz in and just delete the guy. So that is going to be a good default enhancement. That is probably what you should go with just to have a fun game with a leader choice that is not going to implode immediately. But having another option is not bad. It reads sec a secretion goat. Um, once per turn, when a friendly turret unit within 6 inches of the bearer is selected to shoot or fight, the bearer can use this ability. If it does, until the end of the phase, improve the armor penetration characteristic of weapons equipped by models in that friendly unit by 1. Armor penetration obviously going down across the board in 10th edition, so this is going to be an extremely strong rule, especially considering that you have a lot of attacks on your termagants. So upping the armor penetration here is definitely going to help against the likes of terminators, or even the regular Mark X Space Marines. Next up, they discuss a lot of specific rules for Combat Patrol. In the core rulebook, you're going to get all the objectives, maps, how you should set up your board, etc. So that is going to be there. Your battle line units with the keyword battle line on the data card are going to have the sticky objectives rule. So you can just take over an objective and move on. They say that this is going to further legitimize battle line units, which are usually going to be seen as your weaker kind of objective holding units and horde units, while posing an interesting obstacle for elite armies like the Space Marine Combat Patrol half we've seen earlier. So yeah, mission and primary objectives are still a thing, but they are going to be tailored towards the Combat Patrol game format. So here you have a default secondary objective called Wrath of the Emperor. And this one reads, at the end of the phase, you score two victory points if your captain model destroyed one or more enemy models that phase. Easy to kind of get there. Um, your captain is obviously going to be in a little bit of a scary situation because, you know, in melee you can just target him. But still, uh, killing things with your captain and promoting the captain to get in there and not just stay as a backline um, model that is just leading your terminators is a great thing it pushes players to actually make use of their captain and that is something i like seeing or you can choose an optional objective so here again you can pick uh, between one or the other and it reads at the end of each player's turn you score five victory points if you control one or more objective markers that your opponent controlled at the start of that turn so this is strategically completely different from the other one and i really appreciate how different they are and yeah, it promotes a completely different game plan for you and your little army. And last but not least, the article clarifies that each combat patrol is going to have its own tree bespoke stratagem. So you're going to have access to the core stratagems, I assume, and then those three special stratagems that are tailor-made to your combat patrol. So the examples here are teaming brutes, which is basically just either healing these six destroyed models or if a unit is destroyed, you can put a new unit into strategic reserves containing 2d6 models, 
which is really damn cool for your termagants because it is more or less a revive stratagem for one CP. Very useful, very cool, and it fits your combat patrol. Meanwhile, veteran instincts for one CP for the space marine reads, uh, when in the fight phase, target one terminator unit from your army that has not been selected to fight this phase, and the fact is, until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes an attack, reroll a wound roll of one, if that attack targets a monster or vehicle, you can reroll the wound roll instead. So this one is going to be incredibly uh, useful if your terminators are going to be attacking the psychophage or maybe an impulsor or something because it really allows them to punch up and that is definitely something that is going to be useful. So as the article says at the very end, everything you need to keep in mind for combat patrol is very easy. You have three stratagems, one of two secondary objectives. You have a couple of data cards that are specific to your units and usually between five and ten i assume so it is very easy to keep track of and yeah combo patrol is going to be the premier format for new players but i also see a lot of smaller tournaments happening that way especially if people want to just have a lot of short matches maybe with different combo patrols they've assembled and painted so yeah i see combo patrol really having a bright future if gw decides to support the format it is easy to understand easy to execute short games not a ton of models you need to have painted and assembled and it just seems like a ton of fun and it has a little bit of that magic the gathering sealed flavor and a little bit of a board game flavor attached to it which i personally really enjoy so yeah it seems that combo patrol is going to be a great little format and it seems it's going to be one of the quote-unquote premier formats for gw which excites me a lot so before we wrap up the video, I wanted to talk about the Terminator Captain and the Data Card here because I just glanced over it during the kind of main part of the video. So what we have here is a Captain Terminator armor with a 5 movement, toughness 5, a 2 up save, 6 wounds, a leadership of 6 plus and an OC of 1. Very much what we expect for a Terminator Captain. The stats are decent. We have 6 wounds, which seems like quite a bit. And we have a combi weapon, which is, as we've already seen, anti-infantry for plus, devastating wounds, rapid fire one. So this one is going to hit quite hard because you're probably going to get a lot of critical hits on your combi weapon. The storm bolter is just a storm bolter, but the melee weapon part is the interesting one. We have chain fist with anti-vehicle three plus, so you're always going to wound them on three ups. Power Fist, Relic Weapons, and the Thunder Hammer, which has devastating wounds, but no longer deals a flat 3 damage. And we have Twin Lightning Claws, which have a ton of attacks and are twin linked. So we have a ton of melee weapons that have been retained, which I'm really happy to see. I'm actually not sure if the regular Terminator Captain is going to get them in the Leviathan box and on the sprue. I highly doubt that. I think we are only going to have the regular Power Sword or Relic Weapon. Um, enabled for that one i think the full kit that is hopefully going to release later on is going to have all the weapon options but we don't know yet um but yeah when it comes to the weapons we've learned quite a lot the regular relic weapon is also the one you are going to use in your combat patrol games with six attacks the power fist is hitting on twos which is quite interesting we still expect regular um primaris marines that are not in terminator armor or that are not in gravis armor to hit on fours um, if they are captains, they are still going to hit on threes with their power fists. And I think it is just something special that the Terminator captain with power fists are going, is going to be hitting on twos. I think that is only for Terminators and not across the board. And the same applies to most of the other weapons. The chain fist is obviously hitting a little bit less, but it is um, providing the anti-vehicle rule. So that is really good. Um, the relic weapon is just the regular weapon hitting on twos, a lot of attacks. The Thunder Hammer is hitting on 3, so it, minus 1 to hit, but with Devastating Wounds and 8 to 2, so as I said, 1 less damage. And the Twin Lightning Claws are just Twin Linked and have a ton of attacks at a weaker profile and just damage 1. So yeah, I think the Power Fist here is just differentiated um, at Weapon Skill 2 instead of 3 just to have a clear difference between a Chain Fist and a Power Fist. Uh, for the rest, it is more or less what we expect, Deep Strike and the Leader Rule. So you're probably going to attach the Terminator Captain to Terminators. Oath of Moment is the basic rule. Uh, the Rights of Battle, once per battle round, one unit from your army with this ability can be targeted by a stratagem for zero CP, even if another unit from your army has already been targeted by that stratagem this phase. So not only are you getting a stratagem for free, you can also use the same stratagem twice per phase if you target that specific unit. Very strong rule. 
um, CP shenanigans are going to be very, very valuable considering how few CP we are getting per game. So a really cool rule. And the Imperium Sword is basically the Combat Patrol rule. You can reroll charge rolls made for models in this unit. Always useful. Um, admittedly, the Terminators in the box have Storm Bolters, but they also have Power Fist, so they are kind of a mixed unit. So charging with them is definitely something you're going to do. But then we have War Gear abilities, which are separate from regular abilities where you can equip a grenade launcher. So the bearer has the grenades keyword, which is going to be a stratagem that is going to be a core stratagem available to everyone. We don't know how that stratagem looks yet, but everyone with the grenade keyword is going to have access to that one. And then we have the relic shield, which means the bearer has a wound characteristics of seven. So it ups the wound characteristic by one. I don't think the relic shield is losing its invulnerable save of four plus, but considering terminators already have an invulnerable save, it feels redundant to mention it in that rules text, so I can understand why they left it out. But we will obviously have to wait for concrete confirmation there. All in all, the Terminator Captain looks exactly what we expected, and the cool part is just that we've seen all the different weapon options for the Terminator Captain. And yeah, it's cool to see that we still have the flexibility from back in the day when it comes to weapon choices and weapon loadouts. If you've noticed anything, if you have any opinions on the combat patrol rules we've seen, on the Terminator Captain or anything, please drop them down in the comments below and we'll discuss things there. Other than that, I hope this video was insightful and I hope to see you in the next video, which is going to get uploaded in a couple of hours with the next Faction Spotlight. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.